In our last segment, we added Entity Framework to our project and we implemented our database context with our create, retrieve, update, delete operations that we need for our implementation. Now, we're finally ready to write our first test and then code to that test to implement our controller. In our controller implementation class, we need to set up a new constructor that will allow us to inject our database context. So here, we're going to say public default API controller import, and it is going to accept an instance of iLogger of default API controller impl logger and it's also going to accept our database context. So let's import Microsoft logging and then we're going to have our I to do context db context. And we need a place to store those values inside of our class. So we're going to say private read only uh, iLogger of type default API controller impl. And we're going to call that underscore logger. And we need a private read only i to do context. DB context. And inside of our constructor, we're going to assign logger equals logger and DB context equals DB context. We need to import that interface. And now we have this set up so that we can actually write a test for it. So down in our test project, let's expand this out. Let's create a new class that we're going to call to do API tests. We're going to need to annotate this class as test class. And we're going to need to use some classes and packages from other parts of the application. We're going to need to have an instance of the class we want to test. So we're going to create a private instance of our default API controller implementation class. We're going to call it under test. We're going to need some data to test with, so we're going to generate some faux data using uh, a generated GUID, a title, a description, and a due date. We're going to initialize our test data and our mocks using an initialization function. And that's what this test init function method is doing. And we annotate it as test initialize. And we create a new to do instance using our test data. We mock our database context. And we tell it that when somebody calls get to do on our mock database context, it's going to return our test result. And then we create an instance of our under test class using our mock implementation. Finally, we have our actual test code, which looks like this. Inside of our test, we call get to do on our class under test, 
with our test ID and we assert that we get the response back that we would expect. Now let's go back and review and look at what our controller code looks like right now because it's been a few minutes since we've looked at that. If we look, each of our methods, like get to do, the one that we're trying to test, currently only throws a not implemented exception. So if we were to run this test right now, we would expect that the test would fail. And we can prove that. I'm going to grab a quick command snippet here so we can run that single test. And when we run that test, Oh, I think I have a wrong um, namespace. Uh, controllers is the namespace there. We did not, in our test, pass in a logger. So I'm going to add a var logger equals new mock i logger. And we're going to pass our mock uh, logger object using Microsoft logging what is the name of the logging library extensions logging there we go So now we can run our test. Oh, right. Default API controller and pull. Try this one more time. And exactly what we expect, the test failed. And if we check, it failed because of that not implemented exception, exactly like we would expect it to. All right. Now, if we're following true test-driven development, test-first, test-driven development, what we're trying to do is go in this cycle known as red green refactor we start by writing a test that's failing which we've done we now have this failing test that describes a functionality that we expect our application to have now we're going to implement just enough code to get that test to pass and that's taking it green so if we go under our controller here and we go to the get to do operation, we can now implement the code and say try uh, var to do equals db context dot get to do with our ID. To do ID. And assuming that that doesn't throw an argument exception, 
we're going to say return to do. On the other hand, if we do get an argument exception, catch argument exception AE. If we get that argument exception, we're going to say return new not found result. And this is the same as returning an HTTP 404 not found page. Uh, we could potentially include the exception, but that would be a security issue because we're revealing internals about our application to public facing error messages. So we've implemented this method, only took a few lines of code, if we rerun our test, we should expect our test to pass. And exactly as we expected, our test will pass. Between now and the next segment, I'm going to go ahead and finish implementing all the rest of these controller methods. But I'll see you in the next segment, and hopefully you'll have followed along by creating tests and implementing your controller methods.